폼이 좀 많이 떨어졌어가지고 좀그 회복하려고 되게 열심히 그냥 아예 준비하고 뭐 날 먹어서 그런지 시간이 너무 빨리 돼서 뭐 그냥 매번 똑같이 연습하고 뭐 운동하고 술 먹고 이렇게 지냈던 것 같아요 좀 쉬웠고요 아이의 그 예선 준비하면서 네, 다시 스타트 연습 달리고 그랬었던 것 같아요 사실 IM 카토비체 예선 준비를 한창 하다가 떨어져 버려가지고 이제 남들 연습할 때 저는 놀고 있었습니다 아 그거 생각하면 너무 아쉬워가지고 잠을 못 자겠는데 그한 경기 딱 이기면 은 진출 확정인 상황이어가지고 그게 좀 아쉬웠어요 기억과 손이 옛날로 돌아가서 한 싸움으로 그냥 압도를 했단 말이에요 그래서 이길 수 있겠는데 라는 생각을 했는데 갑자기 다른 사람이 들어와가지고 <웃음> 좀 많이 아쉬웠던 것 같아요. 세트 가면 또 몰랐는데 사태란 조회 관계 12강 진출하는 게 많이 힘들겠는데 라는 생각을 했었는데 었또 어떻게 상대해야 되는지도 좀 알게 된것 같아서 이런 것도 있지만 얻은 것도 크다고 생각해요. 제가 2대0으로 이기고 있었는데 이제 스트리 선수한테 역습 입당하고 좀 멘탈이 많이 안 좋았어가지고 그 날이 너무 아쉽네요. 예선을 충분히 뚫을 수 있었는데 못 들어가지고 동네 친구랑 대화하면서 하는 느낌이 들었고 재미가 있었던 것 같아요 제가 뽑고 싶은 사람, 선수들이 다 다른 조에 가 있고 막 이러니까 생각처럼 그 재미가 없었던 것 같아요 근데 제 개인적으로는 어, 랜덤적으로 좀 어, 이렇게 조가 걸리는 것도 되게 재밌을 것 같아요 항상 조 추첨을 하면 굉장히 안 좋게 조가 많이 됐었어가지고 제가 한명 뽑을 수 있었던 게 굉장히 좋았던 것 같습니다 아, 미친놈인 줄 알았어요 제가 팀킬, 팀킬인데 뽑아가지고 그나마 뭐 장욱 선수나 병재영? 병재영이 근데 시드시더라고요 그때 그냥 이승해서 8강으로 빠르게 올라가고 싶은 마음이 있습니다 라인의 모습이라는 걸좀 느꼈고 아 이게 무슨 의미가 있을지 모르겠지만 은 그래도 윤수는 제가 이겼습니다 네 일단 성주만 피하면 좀 그래도 그럭저럭 잘 풀리는 것 같고 윤수랑은 저랑은 실력 차이가 좀 크기 때문에 좀 당연하다고 봅니다 뭐 명호 올려 보내고 남은 세 명에서 뭐 경쟁해도 충분히 할만하다라고 생각을 해서 충분히 올라갈 수 있을 것 같습니다. 이번이 좀 특유의 견제하는 스타일에 많이 휘둘리면서 졌었는데 뭐 이번에는 뭐 저번하고는 좀 다른 결과가 있지 않을까 싶어요. 연습 때 많이 올라왔거든요. 저 뽑으면 질것 같으니까 안 뽑지 않았을까요? 코스가 약해서 그나마 배가 <웃음> 쉽진 않겠지만 지면 안 된다 생각하고 무조건 1등으로 진출하려고 생각하고 사우디 스포츠 월드컵에 진출을 하고 싶고 정말 열심히 한번 준비해 보겠습니다 어, GSL 우승 한번 하는 거랑 어, 월드컵 가서 우승하는 거랑 1등이 되는 게 목표 뭐 옛날 같았으면 이제 우승이라고 했겠지만 우승은 힘들 것 같고 4강 가서 포인트도 없고 좀 그럴 계획입니다 어떻게 보면 제 라스트 댄스기 때문에 참가하는 대회는 다 우승하고 싶고 그때 올 생각이 들어요. 많은 분들이 와주셔서 제가 열심히 그리고 재밌게 하는 경기 보러 와주셨으면 좋겠어요. Welcome back, everybody. We are living in a parallel universe where Protoss players win games in the GSL. <laughs> We've found the one universe out of unfathomably large amount where we actually have two Protoss players advancing into the winner's match, and we are guaranteed at least one over into the round of eight. That's right, they, they can't both lose. <laughs> It's literally impossible. It's literally impossible. We found the one chance where it's actually impossible for a Protoss to not lose. That's insane. That's honestly, awesome. I mean, honestly, this is, we're only halfway through the day so far, and the games have already been so fantastic. And it, it really is a breath of fresh air to see players like Stats and Classic that, I mean, I have loved for basically their entire StarCraft II careers, except for that one time that Classic uh, proxy gated me in a pro league. I did not love him that. <laughs> but besides oh, yeah. that, that was besides him. Besides that, that's right. Besides that, I have loved these guys forever, basically. And so it is so thrilling to have Classic versus Stats coming in here. That's they been have both shown away at you for years. Such good games. One of them is going to be advancing to the round of eight. Let's go to game number one on Oceanborn. <laughs> Yeah. 
You sure you don't even feel a little bit, just a little bit of hate for I'm this I'm hoping player. he loses. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he somehow gets revoked and he can't even play the game anymore because of that. No, that's too far. Okay. This game is too fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, classic, by the way, the blue Protoss spawning in the top left of the stats, the red Protoss in the bottom right. Don't get confused. I feel like there's not enough drama in the StarCraft scene. We need to start that between you and Classic from that one <laughs> Pro League game. I'm so far below his level. Ten it's not years possible ago. for drama. <laughs> You're going to beat him on ladder as well now. You're going to find mm. the cheekiest way you can beat him on ladder. You're going to steal 50 points from him. Because <laughs> I'm so low MMR. Yes. You're going to take... Your, your, you know what you're going to do? You're going to do my Classic that I stole from a Russian Protoss where you... Proxy both your Robo and your Dark Shrine in the corner of the map and drop it into his base <laughs> at four minutes into the game. And you're gonna grab Four minutes? It. Yes. That is pretty quick, actually. You get 50 points. If I ever go up against Classic, I will, I will message you on Kakao. <laughs> 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 Try and figure that out. But man, what a treat to have Classic versus Stats here in the winner's match. This was yep. by far, oh, Stats wants this kill. He's gonna pull a probe out of the gas. It's one HP, he gets oh. it. There you go. So Gamer. first blood drawn here by Stats. It's kind of a big little pick. That's, that's a, it that's is, because usually you can kind of probe around for a little bit and maybe even potentially drop a pylon at the the ramp right there and see what yeah, units like are going to come out of the gateways. You could very easily at this point just make, even if you weren't going to go for a one base strategy, at this point you can do that very easily and just pivot because you have no uh, confirmation as the, as the opponent to know Okay, are they just going to throw down a really fast gateway? Are they going to chrono warp gate right away when it starts? You know, it, it's actually a. It looks like small. It's because it's just one pro, but get, having the scout in the other person's base the entire time until they put that third pylon on the low ground as well. It's like actually a pretty big deal to to get that information. So, if Stats wanted to to go for something cheeky, he could. Doesn't look like he's going for it though. So, no. at least this is still might be in the back of Classic's mind, given the fact that he hasn't actually seen what the early units are or anything. I wonder if Stats is going to queue up another Sentry here, because there was a while where Stats was doing, I believe it was a five or six gateway unit expansion. Stalker Sentry, Stalker Sentry, Stalker Sentry, which I really liked. I was copying that build myself on the ladder for a while because it was such a safe way of getting your expansion up, especially with the Hallucination Scout, as we see the Phoenix moving cross map now. But a little bit of a deviation here for Stats is he hasn't really been hammering the Sentry production too much, instead going into Double Stalker. Meanwhile, Classic is doing a classic one base strategy, throwing nice. down the robotics facility already there in the main base as well as the third gateway, but this is going to get scouted instantly. And the thing about PvP is oftentimes, even when you do scout builds like this, it does not guarantee a hold. You can know what kind of pressure is coming and still have a very hard time holding on with it because the micro potential of, you know, just pure stalker with a warp prism or even one immortal with a warp prism is so deadly. Look at the production tab right now with that Warp Prism already coming through. I'm imagining this is just going to be three gate stalker pressure with a Prism. But it can be a lot. And actually, Classic coming in with a Shade decides that he can't really get too much done here. It's instead going to be a late expansion. So instead, we'll see if that Warp Prism will be utilized to potentially get those Adepts into the main base to pick off probes. There's a couple different ways you can approach this from Classic's perspective. Yeah, I was about to say as well, th this is something that similar to what I was talking about before with the probe kill. PvP is a lot about pivots, where you can get, sir, you get scouted, but you can use that information to initiate, to immediately go and do something else. Because So now Classic still brings the Warp Prism across and warps units in and is like, and it's like, hey, yeah, I am attacking you. You scouted that I was supposed to be attacking you, so here I am. But he's still expanding behind it, making probes behind it, getting a tech building as well, and is now using the Warp Prism in a different way to try and get into the back, get a few probe kills, and even up the worker count, which is exactly what he's doing. It's even at 28 now, and Stats had stopped his probe production for a decent bit there, assuming that his opponent was going to do what he scouted was happening. So PvP a lot of times has this, this these opportunities where, sure, you get scouted, but that's actually almost can be a benefit to your point if you use it in the way that Classic has done in this game. Yeah, it can be a very tricky matchup and even compound the advantage that Classic is able to eke out by that. He has a Twilight Council already researching Blink, whereas Stats, because this entire time he's been suspecting a potential all-in because that is what he scouted, He's only just now throwing down his Twilight Council. His blink is going to be like 45 seconds at least. 
behind his opponents unless he pours every single chrono boost into it. And with stats now, or classic, excuse me, taking a third gas, he should have a lot of money to make a lot of stalkers. And if you're playing mass blink stalker, should classic decide to go down that pathway against an opponent with such a late twilight and such a late blink? <gasps> oh, okay. Careful. Wow, neither was neither player was paying attention. So yeah. luckily <laughs> that didn't go back to classic. Yeah, but. some stutter step, step there. That war yeah. prism is dead. Oof. That was a bit risky, but uh, Stats is also actually going to be making his own prism there. And likely mm. will be for that double immortal drop. Could be very potent as the blink, again, will be a bit later still for Classic. S Classic still trying to find anything he can with this. Ooh, a little flank possibly for Stats. Might be able to find this prism in an awkward position if Classic's not paying attention, but he will stick it into that dead zone. Uh, just recalls it right out. Nice, safe play there. Knows that the units were on the hunt. He will keep that safe. But the blink for Classic is still a little bit later than normal, considering the fact that he opened Robo. So. The fact that this prism is out here right now could lead for some uh, some immortal drop, or it could just be a straight frontal push to try and use those immortals in the actual fight with the war prism uh, reinforcing as well. Because without any immortals here, actually, there's one on classic side. So this actually, I don't know if this is actually the correct move from stats to try and go into this here. We'll be able to pick up those two immortals, put the blink forward, snipes down that prism, and then is able to bring some of the units back as well with his own. But these two Immortals didn't actually get picked off here. And now with two Adepts into the Natural as well, this is a bit threatening here for Classic. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised by that Blink Forward by Classic. I think that, I mean, yes, of course, picking off the Warp Prism is huge value, but he traded so many units to do that. And now he's really stretched thin. He's going to lose this third Nexus more likely than not because he lost so many Warp, or so many Stalkers trying to take down that Prism. I mean, yes, you do have a Warp Prism. Yes, you do have Blink, but your opponent is basically double your Stalker count right here at this third base. More Stalkers reinforcing in. That Nexus is... It's going to be dead. I'm amazed that he was able to take that good of engagement without Blink. Blink is only just finishing right now, and thank God it did, because otherwise Classic might have been able to jump on this army and pre uh, prevent oh. it from retreating. A forward Blink from Stats as well to punish onto that Immortal, and that is going to be that. Stats takes the first game in a bit of a surprising way. Yeah, Classic really overplayed his hand leaning forward onto that Warp Prism. I, I think that was the critical mistake right there because, you know, Stats coming in with that attack, he didn't have Blink, he did have a Warp Prism for Micro, but there were three sentries with high energy on the other side of that. And the army count wasn't too advantageous for him. Blink does more than enough to make up for that difference. But the fact that Classic thought he could get Brave, Blink forward, take out that Warp Prism, and still have a favorable engagement, I mean, those are the split-second decisions that decide the fate of PvP's time and time again. And he absolutely did not get the better of that trade. As a result, he loses his third base. And then stats, I mean, his blink finishes at just the right moment. And he is able to clean that one up. And now stats, I mean, the black horse coming into this group, he was by far the underdog. Defeated Dark 2 to 1 is now on match point to advance in first place to the round of eight. Not what we expected whatsoever. Can he close it out in a 2 0 or will it be going to a game three? Let's find out now as we go into game number two. The blue Protoss down 0-1 in this best of three, spawning in the bottom right. And stats in the top left, leading 1-0. One map win away from the round of eight. I mean, what a beginning to the year here in GSL for Stats, a player that for a long time was arguably the best Protoss player in the world, if not the best, then top two or top three without a doubt, who has been struggling so much since returning from military service has been consistently underperforming the expectations set on him by the fans, by the community, to now come in here and play one of the best nights of his life, certainly of the best, <laughs> the past couple of years. I mean, yeah. This is definitely his most uh, impressive performance, I would say, so far that we've seen him back. This is the first time that I'm looking at this and be like, yeah, this is actually the stats of old. He, he is playing to that level. And it, it's, it's, it's a it's so great to see because he was so good for so long and now it's you know there was that couple years about a year or so since he's been back and it's just like 
seeing him falter was it was kind of un, uh, it was like oh my god is it this is it like is this how he's gonna go is it like oh he comes back and then he just can't really do anything else again it's like oh that'd be kind of sad yeah i mean coming back from iam going over five in the group stages yeah that was uh, it was brutal i mean that was also kind of the the group of death for a protoss player true very true <laughs> it was one of the most one of the most stacked groups of like <laughs> top tier terrans that we've ever seen but to come back from that and show up in GSL undeterred and play some of the best games of the past couple of years is just, I am so impressed with stats. And even if he doesn't make it out of this group, although he is so close to doing that right now, I mean, as a, as a fan of this guy going back years and years, I am so happy because honestly, my heart breaks sometimes when I see players like stats who used to be so good come in and then struggle. Same thing for Classic, same thing for Sue. I mean, these people are legends in the StarCraft 2 scene, and Classic now up against the ropes here. Down 1-0, playing with a really aggressive opening. That is a fast proxy Stargate. And I, Stats should know this, too, with a scouting probe, by the way. He's only seen two pylons in the main base. So I, I actually love the way he's doing this, though, because at the, uh, the way he's done it, he's gone for Stalker Sentry with this as well, which is extreme. You, you don't look at that and think, oh yeah, there's definitely gonna be a proxied Stargate on the map with that. So yes, the third pylon is absent, but seeing the sentry there, mm -hmm. it's gonna make him make Stats scratch his head, being like, well, what, what exactly are you doing here? Because surely you can't afford the gas to be able to go double stalker sentry with a proxied Stargate for an Oracle as well. And you can see Stats isn't quite realizing this just yet. I don't think oh. he's got a battery in his main. Definitely not. He saw the, the hallucination coming across, so he confirms that, yes, it was a sentry. I wasn't just hallucinating the sentry in front of my <laughs> eyes. So he knows exactly what is possible for Classic. And Stargate is not in that rotation of what he's expecting right now. He's got all of his stalkers across the map, and there's no battery back at home. This Oracle could go huge. Yeah, the battery's only about a third of the way done right now, as Stats will take a favorable engagement here in the natural expansion for Classic, but that Oracle's about to reach the mineral line in the main base across the other side of the map. War Prism not done just yet. We don't have a sight line on it yet, but you can see the probe start to fall. Actually went for a sentry there, so only two probes in total go Hold down. Up. And Stats still has two stalkers up here in the main. With some micro, he can take down another one, but a nice probe surround there, almost getting one of those low HP stalkers. And I was expecting, I was expecting the Oracle in the main to get more done, but it seemed like Stats had just enough coming out of those gateways to deal with it. And even recalling those stalkers and getting them back home. Wow, that was, that, that went really interesting because the battery for Classic actually wasn't finished yet, which is what allowed those Stalkers to dive so deep. I wasn't even like considering that as an option because I was just mm. assuming that the battery would have been done already. And then he would have been able to just deflect the Stalkers and then uh, Stats has a panic recall back at home. But the warp gate finished just in time as well to allow the double Stalker warp in back at home. And I think Classic was a bit preoccupied with microing his Stalkers at the front. It didn't allow him to actually target down enough probes in time before the Stalkers were warped in. So the aggression got pulled back onto them. So unfortunately for Classic, that actually didn't end up going as well as it really could have. And he lost a lot back at home at the same time. So now he's actually been down a couple workers in this whole mid game. So a bit of an awkward uh, interaction for the early game here. He still does have double Oracle though. And when you have two Oracles, there's always an opportunity as a Protoss player in this matchup. I do feel though, with the double Oracle not getting much damage done at all yet. And with a later expansion there for Classic and Stats taking a favorable trade. Right now, oh, oh that Oracle is going to go down. Oh, Last hit gets it. That's huge. It is 10 Stalkers to two. Both players are going blink. Classic is throwing down an additional two gateways, I think because he knows if he doesn't, he will die. And Stats, I would not be surprised. Oh, he's actually going to try to do this aggressively. I, I don't think he has quite the read that he needs because I am worried for Classic's life right now, not Stats's, <laughs> given the count of units that we have right now. And Stats, he's not cutting back on the Stalker production. If, if you don't slow down warping and Stalkers, you don't really need to add that many gateways. He is building one Robo, but he is still slowly warping in additional Stalkers. And this is kind of a scary position because Classic is effectively going all in with these Proxy 2 gateways. He did make a, th oh my God. Oh, he's taking the gold, gold base. Yeah, I was going to say there's no wow. third just yet. And now he's going for the gold. I think he recognizes what a bad position he's in. And he's like, game I close. have to make this game 
weird. And Stats now calling for a pause. Stats also being like, hey, this game is weird. I need, I need to think I need about a second this. here. <laughs> <laughs> he takes out a magic eight ball. He's like, is he, <laughs> is he forgetting me? Am I actually ahead? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, obviously, there must be some little uh, tech issue or something, so we'll get that solved out. But, I mean, this game already is looking a bit interesting. I mean, the I, I like what you're saying, though, is that Classic definitely does realize that something's not good for him right now. This isn't He realizes this is obviously not going in his favor, so throwing as many cards into onto the field to hopefully try and just throw stats off. He's like, okay, I'm going to proxy some gateways, maybe go for some early soccer pressure, uh, pressure while I go onto your third base, and then it's like, oh, stats, look, I'm attacking you. I'm, I'm trying to kill you. But at the back end, he's taking a third base at the gold, which if you're stats and you don't realize that soon enough and you see, like, oh, my opponent's going for a big two-base two base attack. I'm just going to win if I hold this. But on the back end, it's a gold base. That's actually not too good for classics. So, or sorry, for stats. So I like the way that Classic is doing this, just throwing out as many weird things as possible to possibly bring this back into his favor. Yeah, I, I think when you're in a position like Classic is in right now where your stalker count is maybe seven or eight behind your opponent, you're effectively going for a mirrored composition. that It will be Blink Stalker versus Blink Stalker. You need to make... The game weird. He's not going to find much more damage with the Oracles. Maybe that could happen on ladder, but it's not going to happen at this high level with Blink Stalker to be on the map for stats. So it's got to be him doing something funky. I think he's going to try and set some stasis traps and see if he can catch as many Stalkers as he can. And the gold base is a pretty good way of buffing that mineral income because you really don't need that many gas to actually pump full Stalker production. Is yeah, that's true. He could probably just stay on that four gas at his... Uh, yeah, for sure. ...from his fir first two bases, and that, that one extra on the gold base should pretty much do it for, for that. So I think the swell, the stasis wards, could be pretty big here too, like you're saying, because uh, since he still kept one of them alive, he could actually put the stasis, like, back behind his army a little bit and then push forward into the into the third base and pressure it a little bit and be like, hey, like... Look, I, I, well, my army's so small. Why don't mm. you come and blink onto me? And then he blinks forward, and then you just stasis everything as they blink right. in. And that could actually turn our fight really quickly. So those kind of plays could be very good. That's something that he needs to be able to try and bring this back a little bit again. Because, yeah, at the moment, unless some of these things go well for Classic, he's still definitely in a bad spot. Yeah. We're getting confirmation from production that Stats actually has a keyboard issue right now. So currently the tech team is trying their best to resolve that. But... Might be a little bit before we actually get him back in the game. But as it is right now, I mean, if I just look at this on paper, if Stats plays his heart, his heart, if Stats plays, if he, <laughs> if plays, he plays with his heart, if he follows, and never gives up, if he follows his dreams, maybe. I, I think, I think he might be first place in this group. Classic yeah. is really up against the ropes. He went for that kind of awkward build, which I love how you pointed out the stalker in the sentry there because. Usually two pylons in the main base and no third pylon of the natural or anywhere else is going to be the tell that there's some kind of proxy. Typically, it's an oracle. But the fact that he went for that and still proxy to Stargate, really clever tactic. Yeah. Especially when you're, you know, one game away from getting knocked out of this best of three and falling into the final match of the day. Right? So I like the tactic, but the fact that Stats was still able to at home defend with a sentry and then warping in two stalkers before the battery finished... And I think he only lost, like, two or three probes. It's two probes, yeah. That is pretty remarkable. Yeah, that's so, a solid defense it's for something that you had no idea was coming and were mm -hmm. actively being tricked to believe wasn't happening as well. Like, that's a good reaction for sure. It's very well done by stats. Even the Nexus on the low ground and the yeah. additional stalker there on the low ground. It was three stalkers and a sentry. I mean, you know there's some kind of tech behind it, but you might be like, well, maybe he's going for a really fast Twilight or a really fast Robo or something funky is going on. You don't really have it on your radar that it is going to be that proxy oracle. Yeah. So stats just, I mean, he showed the same kind of gameplay against Dark, where he just really has been good at rolling with the punches today. It feels like this is some of the best StarCraft that he's been playing since he returned from military service. No, it very well might be the best StarCraft we've seen from stats in years. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, he is so close right now. I mean, what a time to bring that out too, as well. Like, just you know, just in time for the GSL, the GSL here. I mean, before this, uh, before this day, against these players versus Dark, he had only won a single match against him in the last year against Classic. The the, the last time that Stats won a series against Classic was literally last night. Before <laughs> last night. He, was, he lost every single match against Classic. He was 0-4 against Classic since returning to the military. The only time he beat him was literally last night in the Stars War Qualifier. 
and it was a it was a two, a two I think it was a two one or two zero, oh, but it was an, up until literally the last twenty four hours, <laughs> Stats was not playing the best StarCraft that we've seen that we've known that he could possibly play. So the fact that he suddenly turned it on for this group is impressive to say, and I mean, he's literally looking like he's about to walk away with first place in this group. I think he's hustling us. <laughs> you think he was intentionally He, he hustled Aryam Katowice, the, one of the biggest tournaments of the year, specifically so he could get out first in this group. You think for the past couple of years he's been playing below his level? He's been smurfing mm. on the pro scene? He's been formulating this plan <laughs> in the military the whole time. He's like, what if I just look terrible for the first year and a half and then suddenly become good for one day? Might not just be one day. If he it's a like, real he's hustle. He's like talking to his, his like bunk mates or whatever. He's like, guys, I got the best plan ever. You ready to hear this? And they're just looking at him. It's like, what? If it's a real hustle, he's like, you know about? what? GSL 2024, someone's going to pick me first in their group because they think they're weak. But actually, <laughs> I'm strong. <laughs> I'm going to purposefully lose 05 in all the IDM Ketavitsa matches. And then I'm going to blow GSL out of the water. All right, so just taking a really quick look in game. It seems like we might be ready to get back into this. Stats is testing out his keyboard a little bit with some spam. Lots of fours in the chat. Lots of fours. Are you I mean, a four on Nexus guy or five was, on Nexus? I'm a or five on Nexus five guy, on Nexus. actually. But you I was going like to say, because Stats is, I mean, we are in Korea. And did you know that the four is the, the death number in this country? Did you know that? Uh, it comes from, I think, traditional Chinese, doesn't oh, it? it? I think it's a Chinese thing. I, I could be wrong about this. I'm not an expert on numerology in, in Korea. And <laughs> it seems like actually we will be resuming from replay, so oh, okay. just bear with us for a couple more minutes. But yeah, that is interesting. The first time I came to Korea and I noticed that on a lot of the elevators out here, especially the old ones, the fourth floor is just listed as F. <laughs> I was so confused. F to pay respects to those who died <laughs> under this number. <laughs> so good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence that is. <laughs> oh yeah. My yeah. If you ever come to Korea, I'm sure, I mean, we have some people in the audience right yeah, now that yeah, it might yeah. be their first time in Korea. Yeah, you take an elevator, and especially in the older buildings, you will see F replacing 4 yep. on a lot of elevators. It doesn't and make it's any always sense at all. Like, but yeah, for some reason, the yeah, like you said, I guess it's the Chinese letters or something. The the yeah. death number for for Koreans, the stereo, the the superstition is is that four equals death. Also, did you know that if you write your name in red, that apparently means you're gonna die. I didn't know that. That's yeah, yeah. it's bad that, luck. So I, I, so I've, of course, I, I mean, I so like uh, whenever I'm like with the uh, you know the students or whatever at school, they're always like. I write my name in red on the board, and they're just like, you can't do that. Like, and it's like so funny. They just like lose their minds. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, all right. So Stats still has the same issue with the keyboard right now. They are going to be restarting his PC before we, excuse me, resume from replay. But I'm still liking his position, man. I think it's pretty good. And it kind of does suck for stats because everything is kind of going his way right yeah. now in this game. He's got a lot of momentum behind him to now run into a keyboard issue where you're going to have to resume from replay, where you need to restart your computer, and maybe they restart the computer and there's still some driver issue or something that they need to troubleshoot a little bit. It's also kind of interesting, too, because it's like, of all the scenarios for this to happen in, this is also an, an opportunity that does kind of favor Classic in a way because he is the one that is about to start throwing a bunch of weird stuff at him. True. And so Stats is the one that kind of has to be the, the guy that's understanding everything and absorbing it and putting all the pieces together and realizing where he actually is in the game. So it's like if this goes on for too long, then it could be I could see a world where like Stats is a little bit shaken by it and maybe miscalculate something because he wasn't you know, he maybe like forgot that something was happened. Maybe he missed the. You know, he doesn't quite catch some movement on the map or something from before. And he's like, oh wait, maybe there was a probe going to the gold base. I should have mm. checked for that. And then he, like he doesn't or something. I don't think he actually did scout for that. But the point is, is that you know he has to now be the one that's dictating where this game actually continues because Classic is going to be throwing a bunch of weird stuff at him. Yeah, oftentimes when when I was a pro player, if I found myself in the position where I would need to resume from replay, right before the countdown, I would just kind of summarize the game to myself in my head. I'm like, okay, like if I'm in Stats' position, look, I'm ahead right now. I surely have at least five more Stalkers than him. I just need to defend my third base, and then eventually my army all hit like a plus one timing or a plus two timing. I should be good. Mm -hmm. And you'll say that, and everything will be ni nicely wrapped up in a little present for you. You'll be like, I got this game in the box. Like Give Everything is here in my head. <laughs> and then you go in, and there's this curveball. There's two proxy gateways outside my third base. What? And then suddenly, yeah, wait, yeah. he still hasn't taken his third base back at home. He must be really all in. What? And it can be really hard to leave that flow state and then get back into the game and try to re-enter it very quickly when, as you said, 
a lot of curveballs are about to be thrown his way, and this might be the kind of situation where maybe he doesn't have stasis wards immediately on the front of his mind because this has been maybe, what, a five-minute delay? Yeah. I mean, it becomes, like, what do you prioritize now? Like, you have to remember, like, when you're going into this game, what were you about to do? Like, yeah. you, like you, it breaks your immersion so quickly when you suddenly have such a long break, and you go back into it, and you realize, like, wait, what? What was I gonna? What was my next step? Like, what was I about to do? Was I about to like go to my natural and make this thing? It's like, oh my god, yes, I was. And then maybe you forget that. Oh, I was actually also about to then put a, like a stasis ward somewhere. Like at the same time, like it actually does kind of break you up a little bit, and you have to at that point remember what your actual actual priority was of what you were about to do. And I mean, that could play in a play into effect here with this game, this long pause. It's another thing if you haven't resumed from replay before is you join in and the game is paused and when it's paused you, you can't look around the map at all at your base. You can't cycle through your hotkeys and be like, okay my robo is producing, my gateways have ten seconds left on cooldown. You're just thrown right in. You're thrown right in. You don't know what your probe saturation is on your bases. There's a lot of kind of little small things like this that, as you said, they, they can throw you off mm -hmm. a little bit. But luckily, this is a PvP. We just make stalkers, so it's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, not, that it's not like this. It's like some crazy late game uh, PvZ situation where, like, you know, it's just been a total chaos like that first series we had or anything. So, yeah, there's not too many things that could go wrong at this point in the game. But, you know, just the fact that Classic is about to just do a bunch of weird stuff does kind of make, you know, make it a little bit weird. But... Yeah, I know. I mean, if you ever had a game and you're at your own house where you're playing and you get a pause for a long, for a long time and you're a nice person, so you let them pause. <laughs> I was going to say. Instead <laughs> of just immediately unpause. You kind of understand what we're saying. Sometimes you probably felt this where, you know, you, you repause, you you're unpause, and then you're like, wait a second, what, what was I even doing for a second there? Yeah. Have you ever done that? Have you ever unpaused on somebody? You think I'm a bad person? No, I'm just, I'm just curious. How can you even ask me that question, Gemini? Because it's like, you know, sometime, because, no, like, even if it's like they are... You're not because you want to be a jerk. I'm offended. But because maybe they just like pause and then don't say anything. And then oh, they've no, been paused for like the doubt. three minutes or five minutes. At any point, you're never even thinking like, actually, let me just repause right now or unpause right now. You've never done that? Maybe if it's like a five minute pause with no explanation, then yeah, you're going to get lost, buddy. I'm, I'm <laughs> pausing the game. I mean, come on, you have five minutes. You don't yeah. tell me anything that's going on. Like maybe your keyboard, maybe your house is burning down. I mean, in which it, case, in which case, be your priority in which anymore. case, twenty ladder points should not be on your mind. <laughs> I mean, they're losing to me. It's probably a lot more than that. But let's. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, you're high um, up there on ladder. You're higher than me, even. You're up there. Eh, it's been a minute, though. It's been a minute. I, I try my best. I'm surprised we haven't matched against each other ever since we both started playing a lot more recently. I've, I've always expected to eventually find you on the ladders. Are you a barcode? No, of course. Nice. How could you ask me that? A lot of Come people on. play as barcodes. You oh, know? I hate oh, barcodes are the worst, man. I'm with Roddy on this, man. Barcodes I'm, are just. Ugh. I'm also not. You're a barcode. barcode. Get out of here. Close the stream. I don't want you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You should donate to the Patreon. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> we need the. We need man, you really have first GSL cast in a while. You really have the hang of this, man. Oh, You're pumping you. the Patreon up and everything. I like <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> well, so just to up you, update you guys right now, we are we're still in the lobby, which means um, I mean the replay lobby. We're not yet loading into the game, which makes me think that they are still trying to work out Stats's issue. And I know it's a little unprofessional for me to turn around like this, but I actually do want to see what's going on on stage. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, production is talking to us. Yeah, <laughs> you guys sorry, can't hear this. We're just staring into the abyss <laughs> as we suddenly freeze over in time. We've lost all ability to speak. We just don't know what we don't have anything left to say. No, production was letting us know that it might be a little bit more time. There is a chance that we will throw to a break if they can't resolve this anytime soon. As it does still seem like uh, admins are trying to work on this. Okay. All right, fellas, we're going to take a short break as we try to get this issue resolved. We'll be back in about maybe five minutes, so don't go anywhere. Since the day that I was born, I've been a big deal. 
hood anywhere. I don't pay a fee. VIP with the bosses. That's where I be throwing money in the air while I'm standing on the seats, popping bottles with the models. Get like me. My wrist on froze, never missing any meals. I feel like LeBron, cause I get the ring. If you're bad and you know it, you're my 2020. You can roll with me, cause all I do is win. One, two, three, let's go. I'm a hot girl. I'm a hot girl. I get anything I want. This is my world. I make big moves in my big heels. Since the day that I was born, I've been a big deal. I'm a hot girl. I'm a hot girl. I get anything I want. This is my world. I make big moves in my big heels. Since the day that I was born, I've been a big deal. Since the day that I was born, I've been a big deal. Everywhere I go, they want to take my picture. They liking it, loving it. They got to zoom in. I don't care about the rumors. It's amusing. I don't care about no drama, I get hotter in the summer I just get to the money, that ain't never been a problem If you want it, then I got it, I ain't never gonna stop it Either love it or you hate it, it don't matter cause I'm popping I'm a hot girl, I'm a hot girl I get anything I want, this is my world I make big moves in my big heels Since the day that I was born, I've been a big deal I'm a hot girl, I'm a hot girl I get anything I want, this is my world I make big moves in my big heels Since the day that I was born, I've been a big deal don't know the time I'm letting go I wanna find someone in love I feel alive I think you know We're getting down, we're getting low All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, seems like we might have Stats' situation under control. Um, Stats' PC and keyboard during that break have both been replaced, is what production is telling me. And you might be like, Stay, that was only a five-minute break. How did you do that? We actually have the F1 Prix Grand T Grand, I really, I really blundered that. That's the okay. Grand Prix team down here swapping the tires out of his PC. But my goodness, what a delay. So we are still waiting for stats to get everything completely set up. Of course, here at the GSL, usually the players get here about maybe 30, 45 minutes early at least. 
to get all of their settings right on their PC, make sure they have the correct repeat rate, make sure all their settings, their hotkeys are right. And now that we had to replace Stats' PC and his keyboard, it's probably going to take him, I would imagine, at least a couple of minutes to fully confirm everything is correct because you really do not want to miss something critical before you go back into the game. So Stats is going to make sure that all of his settings are correct on the new PC, and then we will be going into resume from replay. So thank you so much for bearing with us. I was actually telling Gemini during the break that this is possibly the longest tech delay we've had at GSL since I started casting a couple, what, like a year and a half ago or something? Yeah, I mean, it's not like, I mean, we were on a tight ship over here. It's, you know, it's very yeah. rare that we get some uh, some difficulties. So, you know, it's unlucky, I guess, but it is what it is, as they like to say. But After the first two series, I was thinking you might be the lucky charm. Yeah, you know, man. having Gemini, you know, the Protoss. the day. We get two Protosses advancing. We get sick games. Gemini shows up early to the studio and all the Protoss players rub his head for good <laughs> luck. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I shaved my head specifically, just for that. Yeah, exactly. But um, now I might be thinking you're bad luck. Maybe it's some yin and yang thing going on. Yeah, you can't be perfect, all right? Come on, don't don't blame us all on me. I'm just I'm I'm trying my best. I'm trying. I'm doing my crazy my my caster voodoo magic to make the game <laughs> as good as possible. It can't be perfect, all right? Yeah. Well, thank you guys for bearing with us. I know it has been quite a long delay. Hopefully, Stats will be able to get his PC completely set up. As luckily, looking down at the stage right now, there is no more you know tech team surrounding him. The admins have vacated the stage so it is just him making oh, sure everything is back. correct oh hello it's armani and dream sticking around fans in the crowd are also trying to bear with this one man i haven't seen them in a hot minute i mean uh, of course armani and dream have uh, retired by this point so they are they don't play anymore but uh Probably cool. still could beat us. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> they walk on, they jump on the PC right now. I'd be dead in five minutes by either of them. It's so true. But uh, no, it's cool to see them drop by. Always nice to, I mean, the, pr the pro players in general here are just kind of, they feel like they're in this nice little tight-knit community. They, they yeah. like to, to, to come around to root on their, fr their, their friends, essentially. They've been playing this game together for years. So I think Seed might have actually been uh, Incredible Miracle Seed, which is a really big throwback name. Oh, yeah. If a lot of people remember him, I think he actually won one GSL at his peak. He's one of those flash in the pan, pan players. That, he he foregated every single map or something? Sounds no, no, no. Wasn't that MC <laughs> that foregated him every game, every map and MC won? Wasn't or, or was it the opposite? I feel like now you have it was, MP, it was MC myself. Seed, wasn't it? Wasn't that? I think it was. was I'm pretty finals, sure right? Seed won. Was it? Was it him foregating every <laughs> every time? It was a PVP, and this is like a decade ago, so yeah, there was a yeah, lot yeah. of foregating, I assure you. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think he was at the GSL finals, if not this past one, then you know maybe a season come by, and yeah, it is nice having the pro players come back in, and it's one of the advantages actually of living in Seoul or the Greater Seoul area is you know everyone is still here. Most of the pro players are still here. I think yeah. actually some of them might have moved down to you know Busan or Daegu, or a couple of the other cities here in Korea. But yeah, it is a really tight knit community, more so than you might think, unless you start following all these players on like Instagram and you see them all grabbing dinner and stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's cool to see, of, of course. Yeah, we are, I believe, oh, possibly going into the game. Nice catch, Perhaps. guys! I think we're oh finally my ready. God, we're doing it we're back all right classic is the blue protoss stats is the red protoss <laughs> stats currently up a number of stalkers he has a significant lead in this game and we were just talking about how in the break classic is going to start throwing some real curveballs on him and that has immediately begun stasis ward here in the main base stalker is blinking forward i'm going to pick off one pylon oh love that defuse right there and Classic is going to blink right back out. Now, just to put you guys right back into the driver's seat, we have these proxy gateways down here in the bottom left. The skins have bugged out a little bit. Yeah, but calm say, down. What was that? Resume from replay. I like both of them had a gateway proxy <laughs> next to each other for a second. I was like, how is that possible? But <laughs> Classic right now here in the bottom right, he does have more gateways in production. So the soccer count has actually equalized. It is 14 to 14. Stats still with the economic lead. But let's not forget, Classic does have that expansion at the gold base in the bottom left about to come online. In a couple seconds, that will be complete. And I guarantee we'll be seeing some probes recalled in there and his mineral income balloon. But Stats once again getting caught out of position. This third base battery immediately goes down. Pylon might go down as well, but instead actually just going to take this fight. And it's not a bad one here for Classic. This is pretty decent from him. I mean, the misposition from class or from stats, I should say, is the the big player here because he's expecting another blink up into the main base. Not taking a, a triangular third is the you know that lends itself to that weakness where you can get blinked in the main. It's pretty normal on this map to not go for that style. So uh, he obviously expected that going into this game, but 
now we're gonna get another blink war happening here, and I feel like Classic is doing a pretty good job here. He's just got so many stalkers. Since he killed the battery earlier on as well, there were no batteries close enough to heal just yet. They did finally get morphed in there, and an overcharge is able to be put down. And now the gold base starts to get kicking in here. This is when stats is, like I was saying before on our break, where he sees this attack from Classic, and even if he defends, he might be like, oh my god, I'm in a such good position because I'm defending a two-base all-in, but he doesn't realize that there's a gold base behind all this. So this is where it gets very, very dangerous for stats. Yeah, the chaos that Classic has just quickly ushered in here after the game resumed is been so many curveballs here for class for, for stats, excuse me. Now I'm getting them a little bit confused. <laughs> it's hard to keep the momentum after that. But stats. We have to say, his upgrades are ahead. The word count is still even, although Classic does have that gold base, so a little bit more mineral income coming from him. Is another blink forward into the natural expansion and a very aggressive blink there from Stats. Just going to use the War Prism to try and micro. And he has plus one charge Zealots as well, so not the worst engagement for him as Classic starting to flounder a little bit. The stalker counts have almost equalized, and Stats has one dozen Zealots too. Yeah, definitely not the worst. It might even just be a really good engagement because that was actually something to really pull the wind out of Classic Sails right there. Even also able to deny the warp ins on the left side as he killed off the pylon, so no more fast warp ins to be able to reinforce this push right here. And since Stats now has charge on his Zealots, that's what was able to really swing that fight, especially since Classic forward blinked into the natural there. And now you can see the punish that could be happening here from Stats as he chases Classic back across the map. He might not even need to know that there was a gold base on this map to begin with because his army is just so big. Those Zealots are such an immaculately strong front line right now, taking all the damage from the Stalkers and Stats He's up in army supply. He's pushing here into the natural expansion. He sees the third base, or what is the fourth, coming online. Shield battery will stall the attack for now. But once that expires, stats, not only is oh. he up in upgrades, he scouts the gold base in the bottom left. Warp Prism is going to fire in another warp in. Classic now has to worry about an attack, not only here in the bottom left, but in the natural expansion. And stats is knocking on the door of the round of eight. Blinks right in, the battery's right there as well for him to target if he so wants, but it looks like the overcharge isn't even going to come through as more and more charge slots swollen through another forward blink out of stats, getting on top of all of these stalkers. Classic forced to blink back behind his mineral line, trying to get any extra surface area advantage that he can, but everything is falling one by one. The charge slots getting on top of all of the stalkers. You cannot blink back anymore, Classic. That is going to be that stats advancing first out of this group when I thought he was going to be out last. I think all the fans watching at home thought Stats was going to be the first player out as well. And even after all those curveballs thrown, as soon as we were resumed from replay, Stats, he dealt with the punches, and as soon as his economy came online, he fought back. And, I mean, what an underdog story. Stats, first in a group with Dark, with Bunny, with Classic, I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I mean, what a tremendous night from this guy. Yeah, I am just super impressed by this. I, again, just not expected to see this at all. And, I mean, just the level of play that he's been showing, too. These were not easy games. All right, interview with stats. Well, it wasn't an easy series, and you had a really tough opponent in your group. But you were able to play a lot of late games. You were able to play a slow defensive style. Do you feel like the games went to plan? Yeah, this is the style that I prepared. I feel like I understand Dark's mindset and his gameplay. I knew he would be aggressive against me, so I decided I would try to play a slow defensive style. But I could feel his strength even in the late game. Throughout the games, there were a lot of really close moments. I felt like I was in crisis. But I was able to hang on through to the end. So in the match against Dark, Dark was ahead at several different times. But at what stage during that series did he feel like you had a shot to win the series? And Stats says never. He didn't know until the end that he was actually in a winning position. He constantly thought he was up against the ropes. 
I feel like Zerg's army composition is really strong, and he was able to stably take the majority of the map. His army control was excellent as well. But in terms of decision making, I, I think I got the edge and I was able to pull him apart. You're asking, it, it feels like both these matchups are very hard for you, and as of late even, you're usually eliminated first in GSL, but today was a great performance. Well, last year, I remember I didn't win a single match in GSL. I was eliminated right away, and I was disappointed in myself. I felt sorry for my fans. I knew I was underperforming their expectations. Honestly, it, it made me feel a little bit depressed, but I wanted to fight through it and try my best, and this time I felt like I was finally able to gather myself and show what I'm capable of. So before we wrap up this interview, do you have anything you want to say to your fans? Honestly, even though I made it to the quarterfinals, I, I feel like my play isn't at the level that I want it to be. I need to keep practicing hard. I need to keep grinding. So keep watching. I'm going to show good games for you guys. Keep cheering for me. I will do well in the quarterfinals. Wow. Well, you heard it from stats. That was an incredible day. Guys, it's not over yet. When we get back from this break, Dark versus Bunny, don't go anywhere.